Here we are in the Wax Lake Delta at the mouth of the Atchafalaya River. 100 or so miles in that direction, the Mississippi River forks. Some of the flow goes down the Mississippi through New Orleans and some of the water comes down through the Atchafalaya and hits the coast in the middle of Louisiana, right here where we are now. Further up the Atchafalaya, there's also another fork and some of the water goes down through Morgan City and some of it comes down here through the Wax Lake outlet. So when we were really thinking about how we were going to do flood control on the Mississippi River, we dug a channel as a flood relief channel. And what did we get? We got a delta. We didn't try and build this delta. It happened by itself. It happens, it's formed, it's developed and looks as beautiful as it does today because the flood waters coming down the Atchafalaya spreading out into the shallow water of Atchafalaya Bay. So what happens is the water's coming down in a narrow channel, narrow channel, flowing fast, flood water. And the Mississippi River, that's full of mud and full of sand. Lots of sand is up there in the water column. It's not just moving along the bed like it does during low flow conditions. When the river is high, it's full of sediment. And it's during those flood conditions that we get most water coming out here. So what happens when it comes out of this channel and spreads out into a Chafalaya Bay, which is out there in front of us out there? What happens is the water slows down. The water slows down and the first thing to be deposited is the sandy material, the coarser material. The river can only carry that up in the water column when it's moving really fast. So as soon as the water spreads out in the bay and slows down, that sandy material gets deposited. So, lots of sand gets deposited when there's a flood. The other thing, of course, when there's a flood is the water level is really high. We're out here in August. It's not flood conditions on the Mississippi or the Atchafalaya now. And so the water's pretty low and it's actually quite dry where I'm standing here now. However, during a flood condition, the water would be really high. Hey, it might even be above my head. It would certainly be covering this vegetation if it was a decent sized flood. So what happens is when the water's high, all that sediment drops out of the water. What happens then when the river goes down, when the flood waters recede, is we have land left. That sand has built up a platform filled in the bay. And so what people around here see when they come out after the floods go down is new land that wasn't even there before. To begin with, that new land is a kind of sandy mud flat. But then what happens is this stuff comes in. And once this stuff comes in, this vegetation starts to grow, like you see out here, then we start to capture that fine material. The Mississippi, the Atchafalaya, muddy water, right? We think of the Mississippi as the big muddy. Once we have this kind of vegetation, this element here, look how dense it is here, and the flood waters are moving across this, then we can start trapping that fine material. We can start trapping that clay and that silt that's up there in the water column that makes the river look really muddy and dirty all the time. So we need the sand to build the platform and then we need the mud to build the marsh on the top. Both kinds of things come together to create a delta like this. So let's look at what we've got here, down here. Hang on a minute. Let's see what this is like. Oh, here's a good bit. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is what it's made of. Look at this. It's fine material. It's, it's, it's clay. Look, you can kind of mold it in your hands. It's almost like kind of pottery clay that you would bake and it would get hard. It's malleable. It's got a bit of organic material, but not very much. It's really mostly made of that mud. And that mud, that mud that's in the Atchafalaya River, that mud that's in the Mississippi River, is getting trapped by this vegetation every time there's a flood. Here we are at the end of one of the major delta lobes of the Wax Lake Outlet. The Wax Lake Outlet isn't all a big flat plain of marsh. It's a wonderfully productive system with ridges with willow trees, vast areas of very healthy marsh vegetation, and lots of really productive, very shallow water like this. Shallow water like this, up to my ankles at the most maybe, it's really good for waterfowl. In the winter, this would be covered in ducks and other waterfowl. Millions and millions of birds come here. When I was a kid, this was all open, navigatable water. You had 10 to 12 foot of water in the bay. This was all bay area, no vegetation, no land. None of that was here. But, I mean, as far as I can remember, back in the early 70s, when we were out here fishing or 
tugboats or whatever we were doing out here, it, uh, it started to change at that point. You could tell from year to year you couldn't take the same path that you took the year before. Uh, every year it changes. Uh, even a minimum amount of uh, high water down the river and we have changes out here. Uh, years ago it's mainly shrimp in this area. Uh, these days you got you got more uh, different varieties. You have the redfish because of the, the you know it holds the bait fish in for them, the shad. You uh, have the catfish because of the fresh water, and I mean you still have shrimp in the area. You can uh, if you can find an area deep enough to shrimp in, you you still have shrimp. I mean it gives us uh, more land, more area, more places to hunt and fish, more places to to use for um, recreation. Uh, in 1970s, in the early 1970s, we were doing some survey work for a pipeline company. They had a pipeline that ran from a main line from offshore to Belle Isle Island. We had to tie in another small pipeline that ran into some wells into the marsh north of here. We were out here in tugboats and large boats, uh, crew boats and everything else, locating the pipeline. This area had about 12 foot of water in it. Even though uh, the pipeline at one time had 12 foot of water on it, you still had probably three or four foot of cover underneath it. But now you have a pipeline that has probably 15 foot of cover on it uh, with the marsh being built up, which is real good. Uh, in some cases, uh, in Louisiana, you have the marsh that's eroding, the pipelines are exposed. Whereas here is the opposite scenario. You have actually implications that more sediment building on top of it, more protection for the pipeline companies. So this is really a good plus when you get uh, a buildup of property, a buildup of land and not, not erosion on them. One of the great things about the Wax Lake Delta is that because it's a naturally forming delta, you have this great mosaic of different kinds of habitats. It's not a flat, solid marsh plain. There are trees in some areas. There are different kinds of shrubs and grasses in other areas beautiful flowers in others, and wonderful, productive, shallow open water areas here too. It's having all of these things together that make this system so productive and so valuable to us. And, and, and that's why many of us think that this kind of thing has to be the solution to coastal land loss. We have to fight land loss by building land and building productive kind of systems like this. We know that we can do it because it's happening here at the Wax Lake Delta. This kind of sediment, this kind of stuff is being deposited here naturally. We're not dredging this and placing it here. It comes of its own accord. The natural system traps this material. This is little parts of Iowa and Illinois and Wyoming. Sediment that's come all the way down the Mississippi River and landed here on the edge of the Gulf of Mexico. It's landed here and it's building new land, a new part of the United States right here. This is how we fight land loss in coastal Louisiana, by building deltas.